Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's go Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and welcome. Thank you for 20,000 subscribers. For those of you that haven't subscribed, please subscribe. For those of you that are returning, please keep watching, keep liking, and yeah. Um, if there's anything that you guys want us to react to, drop the link down below. We'll be more than glad to react to it. So today I'm going to be reacting to our advice to your king. Hope I said that right. That's what I'll be reacting to concerning the LGBT situation or issues. Yeah, so without wasting time, let's get into the video. Hey you! Are you wasting your time on social media again? Your brothers and sisters in the Islam net from Norway are establishing a masjid, a dawah center. Establishing a masjid to convey the message of Islam is one of the best deeds a Muslim can do. There's a huge need for it in Norway. You know this and I know this. So that makes the reward even greater. So give generously and Allah Azza wa Jal will give you even more. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? This is a follow up video from one that I've done before about issues relating to LGBTQ, especially pertaining to the Muslim community, the traditionalist Muslim. Oh, you could call it the Muslim community. And in the previous video that I made, I was speaking particularly about some approaches of uh, some Dawah organizations. Um, I mentioned Ikna, I mentioned Yaqeen, I mentioned some figures of Dawah like Sheikh Yasser Qadi and Sheikh Omar Suleiman and Dr. Jonathan Brown and other individuals um, who are, I would consider, big players in the dawah, at least, or in the public discourse. And rightfully so, because they have made many contributions, which some of their detractors uh, will never be able to make, let alone have made in the past. For example, Yasser Qadi has done some great work, uh, especially relating to the seerah that he's put up in the English language. I think I don't think... Almost anyone has done anything like that in terms of the effort and the output that was put into that and the originality and the uh, research that must have been put into such a thing. Uh, likewise, Omar Suleiman, mashallah, he's, he's done really great work. And when it comes to the production quality of some of the things that have come out from Yaqeen, I think everyone agrees that it's really brilliant and excellent. And when he comes and uh, speaks, especially when he storytells and I have to say it's really, really like inspirational the way he speaks about some of the prophets of the past and some of the companions of the past. MashaAllah, it's really, it's excellent. And Jonathan Brown, an excellent, a star, a great uh, academic who's done some really great work in the past. And I think a lot of the detractors that do attack these people may have uh, perverse intentions, quite frankly. I mean, and I will repeat, will not in the future, let alone have in the past, be able to produce anything like what these individuals have produced in terms of their contribution to the Islamic discourse for the Muslim people. Uh, so we have benefited from that. And I think it's important to start with that kind of recognition because these people have been in the da'wah and in the public space much longer than we have. And we uh, you know, have benefited, I have personally benefited so much from all, all three individuals, I, I must say. And so I don't want anyone to think that this is trying to, you know, cancel them or something like this and wallahi what, what do we gain from that they are friends we have a good personal relationship with them i've spoken to yasser qadi twice we've done two podcasts together jonathan brown i've done a podcast with him we have a good personal relationship there's no need or reason or personal gain that i get from this at all yeah <laughs> at all the second thing i'll say is they've done great work and they continue to do great work and we don't want to disturb that great work now having said all that what i will say is this there are some approaches which need to be examined. Okay, there are some approaches that need to be examined. Now, recently, I was very encouraged to find that after I done my first video, that Yaqeen actually done a webinar. Uh, sorry, they done a webinar. Yaqeen done a webinar on LGBTQ uh, issues. I think that was the name of the webinar, and they did clarify. A lot, a lot of things. They clarified the ahkam of same-sex relationships and so on. And I was very encouraged to see this uh, clarification and happy. And really, I, I, I salute the the effort and commend it uh, ge genuinely. I'm not just saying. I'm not just saying that. And even Yasser Qadi came out and made a video about transgenderism and the fatwas on on that and so on. And, I, and I, honestly, I, I really appreciate the self-reflective nature 
of the institute that you've been able to do all that kind of thing but what i will say is this the level of clarification there's a question i have to you is the level of clarification in line or commensurate with the level of doubt or shubha that has been created this is a question for me to you is the level of clarification that has been provided commensurate or with the level of shubha that has been created. Now, you may ask, why should there be such a shubha when we have consistently made, you know, our points clear on the ahkam of same-sex relationships? I'll tell you why. And since I've had these conversations online, public conversations, which are, which are on the public record, which people can watch, I'll give you three examples uh, of it, in, in fact. The level of shubha or doubt has been created on account of some of the stances that Yaqeen have taken. For example, Jonathan Brown made an article, or has written an article that was then put onto Yaqeen, which argued for the case of us supporting, as the Muslim community, same-sex marriage. Now, he says it wasn't an Islamic case, and he put so many caveats, it wasn't quid pro quo, and it wasn't this and so on. Nevertheless, it was an article that argued that Muslim people should vote for homosexual marriage in America, or maybe elsewhere, okay? And it was on a website of a, an organization which was meant to represent the interests of the Muslim people, and it was really an it is really an apologetic organization which is meant to deal with the doubts of the people. If it is a political article, what is it doing on an Islamic website? Isn't that a shubha that is being created? So the question now which begs itself is can Muslim people support such a thing which is antithetical to their own beliefs? Are you telling me that such a thing was not a shubha? It was a shubha and the evidence of that is that it was removed subsequently after these uh, discussions were had in the public sphere, after we had him on the MH podcast, after the Muslim community wasn't buying quite frankly the, the series of justifications that Jonathan Brown has, has put forward. It was removed. But it was removed without clarification. It was removed without consolation. It was removed without retraction, formal retraction. It was just inconspicu inconspicuously removed. And is that enough? Is that sufficient for the Muslim community? I, I say no, it, well, it's not enough. After you've done something like that, which no Muslim scholar in the history of Islam has argued, you make an argument that no precedent has been given for, jurisprudentially, and then you just remove it and then no clarification is given i think that is quite frankly not fair on the muslim community a second example is there's an entire framework that amr Suleiman has put forward on fruitful coalition building he calls it and it's still up there now and he's got levels of it and we're seeing amr Suleiman, you know shake hands and hold hands and so on with members of the lgbtq community walking in, in the parades and doing these practices and rituals and all this kind of things which has been refuted for and rightfully so quite frankly and then what where is i mean is the level of apology and the level of clarification was it any was it in line with that you have to ask yourself that question you have to ask yourself that question secondly why is it the case that the only relationship that the big players of American Dawah have had with homosexuals is one where they're A, either on the back foot or B, trying to build coalitions. Is this really the Quranic model? Wallahi, it's not. Uqsum billahi al -azim. Wallahi, it is not. What would Lut say, alayhi salam? If he saw the state of uh, da'wah is that we the only thing the muslims are doing with individuals who are self-proclaimed happily homosexuals is this i don't think you'd sorry to say i'm sorry i'm so sorry i don't think he would endorse that in the least why have you never given doubt why have we never seen any of you give da'wah to individuals who are exhibiting this uh, feeling from the non-muslim community True relationship building is not having a phony relationship based on disingenuous beliefs. Or that you try and put the elephant under the carpet or something. No. True relationship building is where you agree to disagree. That is why the homosexual community, some of which 
they have no problem with me. I, it's all for the public record to see. I've had com conversations with them in the public space. And after I've explained to them my entire ethos and my all my beliefs, it's still agree to disagree and it's actually happy days because there is tolerance in that community. I mean, it's not like they're completely intolerant to the Muslim people. Do you have such uh, maybe fear that they will, you'll be rejected by them, that you cannot even engage with them in a positive manner, telling them what Islam is? Why have we not seen one single video or something on the public record where you are challenging the beliefs and the stances and the practices of those individuals who we call brothers and sisters in humanity? If you really want the best for someone, you share what you think you have with them it's not, it's wallahi, it's, it's, <laughs> that's the second criticism. So this is a weak approach. And this weakness was exhibited for all to see in the following clip, which I found was, wallahi, when I f first saw it, I was very upset and angered on behalf of Sheikh Yasser Qadi. Let's watch, let's watch the clip together. Do you the, see how that's the... problematic for a lot of people listening who will say, you say they're welcome in your mosque, but they're welcome as sinners, and that might make well, people no, not feel not very our, welcome? It's not our, it's not our uh, job to judge others. I'm willing to allow them their rights. Are they willing to allow me my rights? When you say you're willing to allow them their rights, their political rights. Their political rights. So you rights. support same-sex marriage? I support the notion that the American government is not in charge of morality. Okay, so you're that's not opposed very... to same-sex marriage? Politically, yes, but le but morally, I, I I don't agree with this. So there's a there's a distinction. But as a law of the two. land, you're not. I agree. Campaigning to I, change yeah, the of law course not. No. Do you think that Wallahi, this is fair, that a member of the so-called scholarly classes, the high echelons of Islamic intellectuality, is put in front of an individual, actually two of them, but let's focus on Linda Sarsour. An individual who is flirting with clandestine apostasy. And that she's putting you on the back foot. Wallahi, it breaks my heart to see that. She's putting you on the back foot. And she's mentioning things which have in them the potential for riddah, apostasy. And they're going unchallenged. This is an individual who's wearing a headscarf. She's in front of a man of deen, religion. And she's saying... We basically to paraphrase that she thinks the cause of homosexuality is the same Islamic cause. You put that to Linda. You're an American Muslim civil rights activist. You campaign against Islamophobia and in favour of Muslim civil rights, but you also campaign against homophobia and in favour of LGBT rights. Do you see that as all part of the same struggle? Absolutely, and I will say this about American Muslims: there has not been any coordinated coordinated campaign oppositional to the Supreme Court um, decision for same-sex marriage. And you're not correcting that. In fact, you're just rever talking about your own track record and defending yourself, Yanni, not even Islam, but quite frankly, yourself. Well, let me put that point to Yasser Well, Fazi. that's exactly what I've been doing, Linda. If you actually listen to the lectures that are on YouTube, uh, I would say I'm one of the very few clerics that have very publicly said. Do you think this is going to give Islam and Muslims Izza? Wallahi, uqsumu billah al azim it is not. It is a failed approach, and it's not an approach that is going to yield any uh, positive uh, effects. And it's likely to mark all of the good work you've done elsewhere. And I see that as a, as a real tragedy, in fact. And it hurts me to say it. It hurts me to say it. But I'm, I'm angered and disappointed. And I never saw this video before. I only saw this quite recently. When I saw it, I was very disappointed, wallahi. To see a woman like that, yeah? A woman like that. Yani, put you on the back foot, yes, Qadi, in that way. Yeah, and you couldn't even ask her a couple of questions that would have put her directly on the back foot. Do you consider homosexuality as a sin? It would have, it would have, if she said yes, then it would, so how do you, then, then you can follow up. If she said no, then you can excommunicate her. You can excommunicate her from the fault of Islam after you do Iqamat al Hujjah. And then you put her on the back foot again. You, you strip her of the fake identity that then she would be putting upon herself. This is the Izzah we require. This is the clear cut. Straight talking, qulu qawla and sadid that we need. It's not fair that the Muslims have this level of representation, quite frankly, on issues so topical as these. And then, you know, and then confusion is put in the atmosphere. So I've given you three clear cut examples of why the shubha as, is as it is. Why the doubt has been created in the minds of the Muslims. The issue is not just an issue of ideology or belief. 
The issue is also an issue of attitude. What made the civil rights movement so successful was not just the arguments that black people were making, say, for example, in the 1960s. It was the spirit that they came with, the attitude that they came with, the confidence that they came with. If they had placid and docile and timid and weak attitudes and their temperament wasn't fit for purpose, the civil rights movement wouldn't be what it is. No change would have been made. If they had shaken hands with the wrong people or tried to take protection and seek shelter from individuals who in their reality don't want the best for, the, for their own communities, it wouldn't have been as successful as it is. He would tell you and all of us that these people are the sheep or the wolves in sheep, sheep's clothing. And he would tell us, <laughs> if you take inspiration from him, to seek self-sufficiency after tawakkul from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is my final advice. My final advice to you guys is don't just change your approach, which of course you do need to change. You need to be more polemical, forthright. You need to put your position forward. Put them on the back foot. But not just that. Change your attitudes. Because if you don't start having a confident attitude to these issues, our people will suffer. Our people will suffer more than they have already suffered. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Your brothers and sisters in Islam Net from Norway are establishing a masjid, a dawah center. This center, this masjid, this educational institution will act like a beacon of light calling the Muslims in Norway back to the essence of Islam. So give generously and Allah Azza wa Jal will give you even more. I love him and I love the way he responded to the issue. This is a person that sees bringing down someone is not the right way to do things first of all he's acknowledged what these people have done for maybe islam their contribution and everything and he's given them all their flowers for that year but then of course he does disagree with what um they talk about or what they spoke about for example in that clip that was Sean, which is I feel like this is the right way to do something. You don't have to come out here and call someone names You actually don't have to come out here and believe to someone um, Speak bad about someone expose their secrets or whatever it is, but you can calmly talk about it uh, And if many people did this I think would have more results than um, Maybe bad friendships or Just bad energy surrounding us understand where he's coming from if your religion actually says this why should you as a big person big person i mean like someone people look up to uh be preaching something else it won't that lead to misleading the younger people that actually look up to you and i mean it's a crazy crazy world for someone because nowadays we're exercising our rights in many different ways. We're so westernized, we're so this and that. I always say, let's not forget where we come from. If we've been raised to feel like this is the way of life and this is not, remember that wherever you go. But in this world, it seems like we're going to have to accept a lot of things. We're going to accept, we're going, we're going to be made to feel like, um, going against what what we believe in or what we've believed in for the last hundred years is wrong we're going to be made to believe that um maybe what we want is wrong it's like we're constantly being rewired to think a certain way programmed to choose certain things over what we know maybe maybe not right and that's the reality of our um our situation right now which is very very sad so what do you do about that how do you stand strong with your brothers and sisters if you're going the other way and saying something else it's really really hard sometimes because i don't know i'm trying to think speaking about these issues sometimes 
you have to respect people for what they are and what they believe in but then what exactly is it telling you about this person if they can say one side of me thinks this the other side of me thinks this so which part of you do you want me to follow since you're part of this religion do you understand or what are you saying exactly are you saying it's okay based on the quran are you saying this is okay to practice are you saying i should be tolerant of this um it's a crazy world it's a crazy crazy world and just stay true to what you are what you believe who you've been what you've been taught never throw that away to get approval for someone from someone else never throw that away to get approval or to get your 15 is it 15 seconds of fame or whatever they equate five minutes of fame or something like that let's be true to what we believe in let's stick to what we know and you know why just headed in a time that's just too too weird to even comprehend otherwise don't be shaken by anything by anyone by any government or any situation like that stay true to you no one else but you let me know what you guys actually think about this and the, just the topic in general what are your thoughts what you have to say if there's any videos like this that you want me to react to let me know by dropping the link down below and i'll be more than glad to react to it make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video